the, the main results are in this column here for 0 0.05 level on the right side. Th we want these values to be not greater than 0 0.06 and not less than 0 0.04. And we can see that we get a deviation once we hit the condition where the standard deviation is 4 in one group and the standard deviation is 8 in the other. Everything else stays quite nice because we have equal sample sizes. Uh, and this is kind of replicating uh, Ramsey, although there is some continuation here. But the key finding here is we start to get a deviation where the standard deviation is 4 in one group and 8 in the other. And the sample sizes are slightly different. And they're actually quite different in a percentage basis. So thinking of these invariances, in terms of variances, standard deviation of 4 is equal to a variance of 16 and a standard deviation of 8 is equal to a variance of 64. So that means 8 times difference uh, between the variances, which is pretty substantial. Probably don't see that too often in practice, but it does happen. And the sample size's difference is such that it's 40%, 7 is 40% larger than 5. So again, that's the key result from this table. Any, anything more extreme than that, and you pretty much always hit an alpha level that's different than 0 0.06 or 0 0.04. So again, I'm going to summarize this uh, later in the recommendation. So this is based on unequal sample sizes. So when you have 40% difference, uh, it really does make a, a pretty big difference if you have pretty big differences in your variances as well. In this case here, the distributions are actually skewed from each other, and they're both positively skewed. So group 1 and group 2 are both positively skewed. And it's not easy to tell exactly what the skew was in uh, this study because it varied from sample size to sample size. But my view is that it looks like somewhere in the 1.0 to 1.5 ballpark is consistently what the skew was across sample sizes. And you can see that when sample sizes are, when variances are equal, standard deviations are equal, you keep the robustness of the t-test. And I have another video on normality, and this con con is consistent with that. Uh, but when you uh, start to get variability in the, f in the standard deviations or variances, things break down pretty quickly. And that's even if you have equal sample sizes. Uh, so a lot of people don't really look at that heterogeneity of variance and fairly substantial skew. I would say 1.5 skew is pretty big. In fact, 2 is the maximum you can accept uh, based on the simulation research I've seen. So pretty bad skew and pretty bad heterogeneity of variance, even in the equal sample size case, is problematic. And that stays true over here as well. Now what if you have differential skew? And this is the last uh, result I'm going to look at f for the Havlicek and Peterson study. Imagine, consider the case where you have one group that's positively skewed and the other group that's negatively skewed. Well, things really break down very quickly in that case, and I don't think people pay much attention to that. My hunch is that it doesn't happen very often. Usually the distributions are skewed in the same direction because you're looking at the same dependent variable. You should see similar directioned skew. And in this case here, if you have one group of negative skew of 1.5 and positive skew of 1.5. It doesn't matter if your variances are equal and your sample sizes are equal. You run into problems. Let's look at this p-value here, 0 0.0174, for the case where sample size of 5 in each group and standard deviations equal a 4 in of each group. Maybe if sample sizes were a lot bigger, it might come back to 0 0.05. I don't know. But definitely in the small sample size case, it's problematic, and people probably don't think about this uh, very much. You don't see it reported in, in textbooks, that's for sure. Now, Rogan and Kesselman looked at more than two means. They looked at three means as well as six means, and or five means, sorry. Actually, I think it might be six means. Three or... I'm pretty sure it's six means. I might be making a mistake there. Uh, so three or five or six means vary the c variation and variances based on coefficient of variation. If you're not sure what a coefficient of variation is, there's another How To Sets video on that. And I'll also show you how to calculate it in SPSS. Now the CV conditions were equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.40, 0 0.8, 1.0, and 1.38. This doesn't look very big, but 
it's actually quite big. That's quite a substantial amount of variability expressed as a coefficient of